So what we're going to discuss today is how to bring a free image from uh, Google to Silhouette Design and put it into Word font. When I mean Word font, I'll show you real quick. See how I have baby, baby, mom, and dad. And this is a superhero or super villain shirt for a birthday party. So we're going to get into how I got these like this. First thing you want to do is come down here to your uh, Google Images, which I just uh, Google Free Clip Art Avengers. And I'm just simply going to take one for the sake of doing so. We're going to take this one. Right hand click, I'm going to copy image, come back to Silhouette Studio, let's move all this out the way. It's very easy, nice and simple, something that you can do. So we'll paste our image there. Um, what I generally like to do is uh, stretch it out a little bit to make sure that it's going to be clear, a good high resolution. Um, and this is part one. These are going to be eight minute uh, courses for Silhouette for those that need help, extra help. And if you need help after this, you can uh, DM me or hit me up via Squad on Facebook, Custom T-Shirts and More. That's Squad, Custom T-Shirts and More on Facebook. Um, so I have my Avengers right here. You can leave the white border. But what I would do is I would come to the right hand side and go down to my fourth icon, which is the trace. And I will select, um, make sure it's actually selected. Sometimes my little Mac has a mind of its own. You click out of that, we'll hit select trace again. The plus sign should come up. We're just going to go over the entire image and it'll highlight. Now, if you don't, um, push your threshold up, you will have missing pieces. So what I like to do is come back to the right and bump my threshold up as much as I can without getting a distorted image. So it looks like everything is covered. And once I start to see a little distortion, I back off the threshold a little bit. And then I come down to the scale and I bump it up. And that way it gets into those details that I can't get. So from there, I do a uh, trace and detach. Wait for my image to process. And then just remove the white water from um, behind it. And there I have just my characters. So sometimes you have to go back and group everything, which it stayed grouped for the most part. There's like some little pieces in here. If I plus my screen up, you can see like where this is missing and that is missing. And this isn't the clearest of images, but it's going to work for what I'm trying to do today. So from there, go back, back out, and that's command and the minus sign for Mac users. And I believe it's control and minus sign for uh, Windows users. Um, I'm going to put command G to group everything back together. And there we have it, the image. So then I would come to my left, and it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, tab down, which is the text box. I hit that. Come over here. Um, as far as text go, you can use any one, but I find that using like a wide font is the best thing to go with, especially if you're trying to encapsulate pictures into the words. Um, so I'll just type. Uh, random word man I don't like that font that font was I was using it for something else but I'll come over here to the one two three four five six seven which is also the text I'll hit that and yeah that's like salt water or something but I'm trying to go for something real basic well not too basic let's do the plastic bit all right so there's the man right there I'll stretch it out to almost the size of the image and try to get like the best pieces. Now this is where you're going to want to play with the image a little bit. You don't want it to completely be on the outside because you'll be missing pieces. You just got to do the best that you can to your capability. And it's going to take a couple of tries. So from there you can see the man has a little bit of Captain America, his shield, this gun in the back, a little bit of Thor. Uh, I'm not sure which character this is. Hulk, um, Ant-Man, and I can't remember who 
this character is. But from there, you want to click on both. So you want to see that double border. You want to see that it's actually got both the man, the letters, and the actual image. From there, we go all the way up to objects, or you can right hand click. Um, you go to modify and you hit crop. And just like that, it gave me the man in that funky text that I have. So usually I like to throw a background, and I really don't like the shape of this, but you guys get it. Oh yeah, and a lot of times once you do it, everything becomes ungrouped, so you would have to group it back together so it'll move as one solid unit. So for this sake, I'm just going to bring this one over that I've already done. And how I got this like this, all I did was, uh, actually, we'll move this. So we're going to switch from this image to this image. We go here. We hit the offset. It creates a border behind it. You can um, adjust the threshold or actually the distance between the letter, the mom, um, by going down. I usually try to stick with 0 0.095. However, it does jump down sometimes after I get there to like 0 0.085 which is not too much to worry but I want enough of a border that we can see so that red will actually pop behind it. I'll click off the image, I'll move the mom, make sure this is all grouped together because a lot of times when you copy and trace the stuff becomes ungrouped automatically. Command G then I'll come over here to the color um, palette, which is one, two, three on my far right. And I'll choose whatever color I want, maybe black this time since you guys seen red. And then pull it down. And now you have a border. So that's how you create images inside of words. Um, this is a mini series or mini courses that I will be uh, giving out for free in the squad. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the squad or uh, Facebook, Mike Tease. I appreciate you guys. Until the next one, I'm out.